So welcome, this is the STEM Fellowship Content Creation Interview. So this is going to be a series of interviews where we are just going to be interviewing people in STEM. Hello everyone, my name is Alexi. Uh, I am today's, I guess, computational biology speaker. I'm a fifth year PhD student at the University of Toronto and I am doing um, computational biology. Uh, so my background is data science and machine learning and then I joined the Department of Molecular Genetics and right now I'm working on my PhD there. So the first question is um, some basic questions about yourself. So what is your favorite thing about computational biology? I would say the favorite thing is the skills you learn doing computational biology, especially the machine learning skills. You can apply them in other fields too. So for example, uh, from what I know, if you want to work at Google, let's say as a data scientist, they would actually count the years you spend doing your PhD in computational biology as like practical experience. Mm, so it is a good opportunity for you to learn some computational skills, uh, learn some biology at the same time, and still have a lot of experience that you can use to apply for good positions out there, not necessarily computational biology. Mm, so was there a specific reason that made you decide that this field was the right one for you? Uh, well, uh, when I finished my undergrad, I was basically just a data scientist and I was looking for a place where I can go to do my PhD. And I was considering different departments. I was thinking about computer science, I was thinking about genetics, uh, environmental science and other departments. Uh, one of the reasons I joined genetics was the, there is a lot of data in genetics. So there are a lot of different data sets, there are massive amounts of data. So there is a lot to work with. And biology is quite messy. So everything interacts with everything. There are complicated pathways you can study. There are diseases you can study. So there is really a lot to do. And uh, if you're a computational biologist in like 2021, let's say, and you are going into genetics, there is most likely going to be a lot of work you can choose from. And a lot of labs are looking for computational students. Oh, that's so cool. OK, so like, how would you summarize your experience like within this field so far? So far, it was great. Uh, I would say it was pretty much like a normal data science experience working in any other field, just the specific biological questions you're solving. Um, I would say that UFT is great. Uh, our department, the molecular genetics department, is amazing. There are a lot of really good profs who know the combi very well, and uh, there are some profs who studied like MIT, did their machine learning there. So there is a lot of expertise. So you learn from professionals in the field, you work with interesting data, you do some cutting edge research. So you have to more like a genetics is amazing. So that sounds really fun. Um, we just wanted to know a little bit more about the field. So I was doing some Googling and it's my understanding that it's that computational biology is applying like computer science and data science to biology, is that correct? And how would you define it? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So there are a lot of ways you can apply com com computer science in biology. You can optimize some processes. You can help, for example, with drug discovery. You can uh, help with uh, narrowing down, for example, the range of, let's say, proteins the lab needs to study to find some specific proteins for specific disease. Uh, some people I know that are in computational biology, they work on developing tools. And so they create tools either for other computational biologists or for uh, experimental people to analyze data or visualize data. And so there is really a lot to choose from. You can be working on diseases, you can be working on basic research, uh, learning something about the cells. Uh, you can be developing tools, etc. So there is a lot to choose. That sounds like so much fun. Okay, what myths would you like to dispel about the field, if there are any? I haven't really heard any, to be honest. I, I don't know. I, I haven't heard about any competition Belgian myth, but maybe... Actually, no, I have no idea. Uh, Should I just start uh, making uh, up myths at this point? Um, you, you, you can make up. You can make up some myths, and I'm gonna. I'm not gonna destroy. Um, let me think of some. Ooh, I heard that it's all about robots. Is that true? Is uh, it. It could be about robots. So there are some labs that use robots in their pipelines. For example, I did a project with Boone Andrews lab and they, uh, it's a yeast lab. So they work with yeast and it's a pretty rich lab with a lot of grants. So they have a lot of really cool robots they use. For example, uh, they have robots that automate um, the cloning process for you. So you can just load a bunch of petri dishes and they will do cloning for you. 
like a robot that uh, basically like a microscope. So it's a microscope robot that will take uh, images of cells and split them in pieces and send you on your laptop. So as a computation biologist, you can be working with this kind of data. You can be helping to automate those pipelines. So, for example, one of the projects I did for them was uh, making a tool that looking at the images can tell which is having a mutation and which is not. So this is one of the work you can do with robots. But it totally doesn't have to be about robots. So there is a lot of different kinds of data. There is data uh, like rna -seq data you can be working with. There is some uh, work you can do on like protein or let's say DNA sequences, RNA. So there is really a lot to do and there are a lot of processes to study.